are watching the most amazing RC show on the planet. Hi and welcome to Stupid Fast RC. This is an exciting day for me. This is the first FPV car I've seen. This is called the Ratting King or the Rating King, depending on uh, how you want to pronounce that. I guess it's the Rating King. It's from Etchine. Now Etchine have got a fairly good name in RC, and they, they certainly have a fairly good, they have a very good name in drone technology and FPV stuff. And uh, now they look like they've moved into the car market, which is amazing. Now let me tell you about this car. This comes with an onboard uh, FPV camera. It actually has a second camera that comes with it to record the action, and uh, you get the car, the transmitter, a 7.4 volt LiPo, which is a 1500 milliamp. USB charging cable, uh, a manual, it's a 1 14th scale, it says 35 kilometers an hour, 22 mile an hour, doesn't sound all that fast, but of course at that scale it's not too bad. Um, it's a fairly basic sort of a car, people are going to say it's not, it's not hobby grade, uh, but it is certainly the first of its kind, reasonable for the price, around it, coming in around about the $140 mark, depending on where you are, what your exchange rates are, and what you're going to pay for freight. So uh, let's get it out of the box and take a quick look. Okay, what's in the box? Uh, the car, a transmitter. Now, it says that it actually doesn't come with batteries, but it does. And these are not only batteries, they're rechargeable nickel metal hydride 1.2 volt batteries, which I thought was pretty cool. Everything else is ready to go. Um, this is the auxiliary camera. It's a 720, 30 frames, I think. All right, that's correct. So this is a second recording camera. So you've got your FPV camera in here, and this is a sports camera, 720, 30 frames, wide angle sports camera, and it's called the Feel Cam, which uh, I think, Etchine, if you're out there, you need to let me do your marketing. It's not what you think. Okay, it's got a little battery. There is uh, adapters, char USB chargers for those, USB charger for, Ah, the actual battery in the car, that is going to take a month of Sundays, you're going to need a charger. So yes, it comes with a charging cable, but what you are going to need to buy is a charging cable. You are going to need to buy FPV goggles. We'll put the aerial on, peel this plastic off. What else have I forgotten to tell you about this car? Let me see. Yes, the camera is a 1000 TBL CCD, 110 degree mini camera here, and a 5 gigawatt image transmission there is a little light on the back here which is kind of cool and you can get seven different colors when you plug this in now the, the when these guys said ready to run they weren't mucking around what we're saying when we say ready to run here we mean plug the battery in of course uh and these are uh, oh and turn the power on of course that would help wouldn't it uh always remember to turn the transmitter on first should be on a block all the usual rules don't forget any of that stuff and we are away look at that isn't that cool so now what happens here is with the flick of a very small switch we can change the color of this light or turn it off it would seem god i hate small switches why would you do that um Good question. Perhaps it's in case you had more than one and you were driving around together with your mates, you could identify your car with the color of the rear light. I don't know. If you've got any ideas about that, put it at the bottom uh, in the comments. There's a couple of spare clips, obviously uh, some double-sided tape to glue your camera down. And now, we are uh, the, the, the other thing you're gonna you can drive this as is ready to run as promised on the box fantastic what is missing from this equation is fpv goggles now i've got two types of goggles today that we're going to try um these are etching goggles which of course are the same brand as the car which is fantastic i bought another lot of goggles from banggood all the stuff's coming from banggood these fpv glasses are pretty cool too and I'll tell you why. Firstly, they don't look quite so geeky. 
And secondly, inside, on uh, this side, did I get that right? Yeah, this side, there is a little screen and that's a 70-30 split of what you can see in the car. So you can see the car in real life, so it's not quite augmented reality, it's, let's say, augmented FPV for want of a better word. I couldn't actually find it on Google anywhere. Um, you can have a look if you like, but it does say that these are FPV glasses. So we're seeing what the car camera can see, but we can also see everything else. Whereas these glasses here don't do that. You can only see what the camera sees. So if you're gonna use these goggles, you will need to be sitting down. Um, maybe that's obvious to everyone. Well, certainly wasn't obvious immediately to me until I put them on. Uh, you lose sense of where you are because you're concentrating on the car, you're looking in the car at the car's view of the world and even if you did know where you were sitting or standing when you started and you start to move around that split of uh, your brain processing capacity if you like as to where you are and where the car are becomes quite complex and of course given that you can't see where you are you're guessing and it's you're, you're at risk of hurting yourself so I don't recommend that sit down to use these uh, and you can follow the car with these. So that's that's the big difference. You could stand up and, and watch the car and do things, but the experience is completely different. The, the experience with these glasses is that you're in it. The experience with these glasses is more, um, I can see what's going on from the driver perspective and of course get an idea of what this camera is recording. And now these goggles are the ones that you can see the lens in the top right hand corner there. As I tilt it up and down, you can see that little um, image that you're going to see when you're driving along. Now these work fairly well inside, not quite so well outside. If you wink, <laughs> you can see that screen fairly well. The other goggles are these more um, unattractive ones, but much better view. You see this? You can see exactly what's going on here. And as the car moves, which we're going to do in a sec, um, you'll see how easy it is to drive. I mean, it's just like being in, in the real thing. So um, it makes a lot of sense. I did notice on this car, they see there's a bit of glitching here. I, uh, I'm actually gonna try it with a better antenna on the transmitter. You can get a cloverleaf antenna. This one did not come with one. It says I got further and further away from where I was. Glitching got a little bit worse. So um, yeah, I think I'm gonna try that. But apart from that, totally different experience. This car comes with the reverse, by the way, look at that. Okay, eventually, <laughs> yeah, right, we're off. So, yeah, it kind of depends what you want to see. Um, I'm gonna show you now, uh, in a sec, the guys actually driving it up and down the road, and you'll you'll get a feel for what, it, what it's like, and so that's glitching really badly, um, and what they had to say. Well, now, about the car, so which is why we're really here. We weren't here about the glasses, we're here about the car. So what do I think about the car? The car is um, reasonable. It's not, uh, you see here, it, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a little bit flexy in the chassis. It's not a hobby grade car as I said to you before. Um, it's a toy grade car. As such, um, although it's built for off-roading, you're not going to be able to bash it hard. But by that I mean, you know, running into walls, the sort of things that um, you know you might do with a uh, a hobby grade car and be happy to replace the parts. Then you know that's the sort of thing you would do there. Look, it's sturdy and it's not. Um, I wouldn't say it's at the cheap and nasty end of stuff. It's sort of it's mid-range toy grade. The bolts are uh, oh, there's no spanners with it. That's interesting. Um, fairly consistent, they're, they're hex bolts on the bottom, they're flush with the chassis. One of the things, that, and I say that because if you've got anything sticking out from below a chassis on an RC car, it tends to get ripped off or broken or shaved off. So, you know, they've done, they obviously know their stuff, they know what they're doing here, they, they have, have a good eye on what the suspension looks like. Um, they've used uh, dog bone, dog bones in the actual uh, transaxial axles. The suspension, look, the, the, all that part of it looks fine. The electronics is uh, obviously very good. It's a brushed engine by the look of that with an ESC, um, two cell ESC. You're not gonna be able to put, do much in the way of putting more power into this. Um, and I'm not entirely sure why you would. Because people have put comments on the bottom of some videos and saying, well, how would I upgrade specifically toy grade cars? And I think the short answer is you, you wouldn't. Um, 
if you're getting a toy grade car, you're getting it because you don't want to spend a lot of money. You're happy that, that you understand it's more or less disposable. And I think that's the very important point that we make here. A car that was like this with, that would be sold by you know a major manufacturer that you get parts, can upgrade, would cost two to three times more. And although the technology in this is, the camera technology is very advanced, the actual build of the car is targeted at, at, at a price point. And I think that, that's, that's the difference. The difference is you pay less, but you get, you get what you pay for. Um, so the pluses are the tech, um, the minuses are you still need a bit of extra gear to get it running. Um, you don't need gear to run the car straight out of the box, but if you want all the, the smart fruit to run, you are going to need glasses, you are going to need, um, well, you, could, you can do without a charger, but as uh, someone else in another video pointed out, it's going to take quite a while to charge a big LiPo with uh, this and uh, a lot of heat is going to be generated in the process. More of a uh, experiment in science than it is a basher. I know that um, one of the other videos I saw said that this was a bashing car. I would say no not really. It's um, something that you would just drive around and have a bit of fun with um, but it's closer to a science experiment than it is, than it is to a basher. Um, very good science experiment but still it's, uh, it's a teaching tool about video about driving, about driving FPV, introducing FPV to an RC, all the rest of it. Um, from that point of view, 10 out of 10. Uh, from a bashing point of view, meh, three or four out of 10. So that's uh, that's what I, I think, but you know, great car. Um, do I think it's amazing? Yes. Uh, are the manufacturers reputable? Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Value for money, yeah, not bad. I mean, for the tech, amazing. Uh, so it was pretty good. It was a pretty fast car for an FPV car. Um, it's really nice to drive and I th think that the FPV is pretty good. Um, these goggles, they might need to be this side a bit darker so you can actually see what you're doing. And yeah, what do you guys think? Uh, well, it was very cool experience. Uh, I, I found these ones better because I reckon it was more darker so you could see them all easier and then these one probably looked the coolest but you couldn't really see that much and yeah it was really cool okay. um the car was really smooth and the goggles were like really nice and good experience for me so i reckon i should get one of these okay thank you for watching stupid fast rc oh, okay. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Hey, don't forget to subscribe and watch these crazy videos too! Stupid Fast RC! <laughs> What's Tootie's precious? What's Tootie's? Spoil a nice fish, give it to us raw and wriggling, keep nasty chips. <laughs>